Welcome back. We're getting into the last series. <clears throat> this point, top is first place, and it's just determining who else will qualify in second place. So whoever wins this, that'll be it. And uh, we'll know the other two, two more qualified players for the BTSL groups. Yeah, so I really do not love that today ended up being only three best of threes, but it is a rare and unique occurrence, and it's something that we can reflect on later. Uh, for now, however, we get into this last one. These two actually with the scores being tied up, it doesn't really matter. Whoever wins this goes it second. So that's it. Plain and simple. Winner of this PvP best of three will qualify alongside top to be part of the Asia Open qualifiers. But spawning here in the top left, he's the barcode. He raised a lot of questions as to who this person was. It is, in fact, Mamba. In the bottom right, as the red Brodos, it is Cyan. Saw so this dub saying, uh, damn, if I knew what it's sitting longer. Dude, dub, this was like, uh, this wasn't figured out until like last night type thing. I didn't even know it was coming down here, so. Yeah, having some good times hanging out. The people at Twitch are really, really cool. Got to see a lot of friendly faces. And it's a nice office. I wish I could like share the experience of the game room a little bit more. They've got this really cool 5v5 setup. I can actually, like while I'm casting, I see five people on the other side of the glass wall playing various games. Some people play Smash earlier. Like, it's cool. I like it. That's pretty cool. Uh, this is going down to a PvP. I guess we didn't really emphasize that since we got into the last series. <clears throat> but uh, mirror matchup. Cyan, I feel like, I don't know what it is, but I feel like his PvP is okay. Um, maybe I was more impressed with his games versus top, maybe I just remember some of his weirder PvPs, but, or maybe it's because I don't know Mamba at all, I mean, that could certainly be it, but I feel like Cyan should have this, um, but Mamba could be an entirely different beast in PvP, like, not just a different matchup, but I feel like a vastly different matchup as what PvP can be compared to TvP, uh, more build openers to do, more tricky things to do, um, and just the, the good old classic mind games of a mirror game. Uh, mirror matchup can always come into play. I just this matchup keeps changing. I swear, like it's. I had this figured out, man. I feel like this is the one matchup I feel I figure out, and then it changes to spite me. Like Phoenix <laughs> are out matchup forever. Okay, so we're seeing these Phoenix versus Phoenix really dumb games like last time. Uh, I think okay, you know what? Stalkers are great. They nerf stalkers, so forget that. It's back to charge lot archon. Now suddenly disruptors are being made a thing, and like we've seen it in small doses. It's not quite the next big thing yet, but I never know what to expect anymore. And that's kind of a good thing about PvP in that regard, but it always makes me feel so silly trying to commentate it. It can really feel like a, a silly um <clears throat> well, a silly matchup. I, I really think that it's a very refined, cool matchup, but it feels kind of awkward to cast sometimes. I think you're right. There are so many options, is kind of what I was was getting at, being a little more general. Well, Look at look at it. Stargate for Stargate. I swear, if this is Phoenix for Phoenix, dude, I'm a, I'll punch something. It definitely could be. They're both doing a great job denying scouting. Uh, Mamba's probe was actually in the main, but it died before it could scout the Stargate. <clears throat> and uh, you know, the only thing that they know is that it could be a Stargate for both players. So they both see there's a delayed natural, and I'd say fairly common. You know, there's a follow up of a, a Stargate with that, and it would have been. Not surprising to see both of them go Phoenix with that knowledge, but it's Sign who goes for an Oracle, which could definitely backfire here. Oh, oh yeah, especially because he's gonna get hard well, cancer. Phoenix. Well, I shouldn't now. He just saw that it was a Phoenix opener. Oh. <laughs> Probably just went right in there. He did see it though. Like we know he saw it. But yeah. Whether he recognizes that or not, he does not cancel the Oracle. I well, he saw it go across the map, so he might just be taking a gamble here. Maybe. I mean, this is the chance another one gets produced. In fact, it is right now. If that gets Chrono, that should be out in time to save the lives of probes. But Mamba is gearing up for the attack. We got pylons being built on his opponent's side of the field. Slow warp-ins are still warp-ins. Yeah, I think Sion's just taking a gamble. He might be predicting not just a Stargate opener, but also this oh, uh, kind of new and improved... Uh, Phoenix all in because Phoenix lifts do take away the power of the shield battery. So the Oracle is going to have some trouble getting damage on. So Chosen to stay this uh, ward instead. Very clever. <laughs> oh my, my god. Only three probes remain mining. This is going to be devastating when it comes to trying to get warp ins. But as we get into the fight, he takes out the sentries. 
That's the beautiful thing about Phoenix. Bonus damage to light. The Adept tried to transfer in through, but he gets blocked out. That's fine for his opponent, but the Stalkers are still winning the Stalker fight. The Phoenix are doing a good job crowd controlling and taking away the shield battery power, but they're out of energy and the ground war still went in favor like once they're dropped they get the shield battery again and there's two of them three of them actually i sign was so prepared for this the stasis trap another one just hit that must have been oh, so perfectly oh, timed yeah. income graph it oh god ha huh. it's like a, oh my good god he couldn't he couldn't even afford like barely a, another soccer to warp in there's so little mining look at this guys it's 167 minerals per minute there's the gg compared to his opponents nearly 1000 being down a nexus being down workers i can't believe cyan it was funny he lost the game like there were kills and there was violence but what killed him involved no violence and no kills the oracle <laughs> made the original dustin proud or proud yeah this will never kill a worker and he was I can't right believe, like the first one goes off you're like okay that's big the fact that he got a second one equally big is insane like yeah. that is 40 something seconds of no mining from all but three of your probes you cannot possibly play that out that was uh, so insane. I mean, Mamba, it's not just denying the damage on your probes, like the actual death. It's also about not having to worry about your main base anymore. So he probably thought he never had to look back. And that's why two of them went to get, actually got done and, and got so many probes. But focusing on the front didn't end up working out as well as he hoped. Phoenix All In is becoming, I think, a little bit on the nose. Like, it's kind of coming obvious and... Nope, uh, I refuse to recognize it. Because it'll change the second I do. Okay. Um, but seriously, I think that it is something that was at one point, like, wait, he opened Stargate and then he all in me? Like, what? what? But now it's like, oh, okay, he's going to go for the Phoenix. And so, Cyan had a pretty perfect defense. Well, Blackwater could be the next map. Uh, <laughs> gosh, I hope this isn't over this quick. But if it is, it is. Either way, uh, Yes, Cyan in a really good spot right now, guys. Up 1-0, looking to secure his qualification here. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, yeah, so backwater is going to be the second map. And both players are ready to go. So we What's had... What map did you just play on? Neon. Nailed it. So almost the same map pool. So close. Uh, we'll see if Mamba is just someone who all ins or also has a decent PvP macro game this time. Whoops, it easy. Well, the man in question himself spawning red in the bottom right, the barcode known as Mamba. In the top left. As the blue Protoss, it is Cyan. I really don't think the all-in was the problem with that game at all. The counterplay with the Oracle obviously really stood out. And we could nerd out about that for some time. But for me, because the Oracle got to get so much done, just made me feel like the reaction time or maybe even the map awareness of Mamba just wasn't there. Yeah, I think that he, he plays a better, more accurate game where he does see the oracle and reacts to it if he didn't think he didn't have to if the shield battery wasn't supposed to cover against oracle damage um which could show itself in this game really another one base all opener could happen because i think you're right it wasn't really the all in that did the that caused him to lose it was the oracle damage and it also was i think a little bit of, of lack of mystery cyan got a second scout when he wasn't supposed to and that was really big uh, as well <clears throat> kind of glossed over because the oracle thing was so huge but the second scout wasn't supposed to happen and that attack can absolutely work if there's one or two less shield batteries it's probably a victory for our red protoss now so we'll see i asked if he was an all winner in this matchup or he could play a macro game he certainly played macro games against top i think it's guy he's got it in him I would be very happy if Cyan got through this. Nothing against Mamba here, but uh, just somebody. I always there's always this home field advantage for underdog or whatever you want to describe it as. Where, like we see this guy come out a lot, but we don't get to see him that often. We know he plays in a lot of Lima leagues. We know he signs up for a lot of Korea Cups. 
It'd be really awesome to see him actually get through to the group stage and then maybe have a chance to cause a crazy upset. Unlikely, but still have a chance to. Hmm. I kind of am rooting for him too. It's always cool to see someone you don't know at all, like Mamba, get a victory. Um, especially if they do it like a flashy way, like 2 0 someone really good. But at this point, I think it's, it's, that could be a good story. Cyan kind of just like judging along through those lower uh, bracket runs and then finally getting qualified is kind of the cooler one. So he does set down a pylon block, which is what he did last game too. That might have prompted Mamba to be a little more aggressive, although usually you just. You react to it, you kill it, and then you move on with your life. You don't necessarily believe you have to all-in because of it. But he's already set down a Twilight Council anyways. Um, while we have Sign going for a Stargate opener again. Will he see that Twilight Council? Does it mean... Oh my god, Divi, you talk so much. Does it mean it's going to be a Dark Shrine? Or is it some quick Blink build? I don't even know why Diva's in this game. She doesn't have anything to do with StarCraft, apparently. Yeah, right? Uh, it is a Dark Shrine, which is what I was expecting when I got thrown on that blink just in case something weird happens. Now, the Stargate opener does protect you somewhat against the DT, but there's a complicated problem of having too few revelations. Um, usually it's well, fine, though. What I really liked about that, by the way, though, was the building block and the Adept Shade getting in there. Not just because it would stop damage, but it stopped that scout, that oh-so-important scout. And he has, yeah, successfully now three times denied the attempts to get to the main and look around. So science saw a nexus, but what are the other signs that it could be something like a dark shrine? I think if you started counting up units, and of course if this oracle just straight like right on the main base, that'd be good too. Um, you could tell, but yeah, with the lack of adept scouts in the main, this is so far, I believe, a decent block on the on the scout. It's a decent mystery build. The mystery was lacking in the last game, and part of the reason why Sion was able to defend so well. Also, if he scouts a proxy pylon, which he definitely did, <laughs> I could also be a bit of a tell. Yeah, I'll take that out real quick. Yeah, he's building another oracle here. I think he has some indication. It's like, okay, something was a little off. Like, what did you build if your nexus was late, if it wasn't a stargate? Um, you know, and of course, a robo could have happened, so could have Dark Shrine. The DTs have to be warped in back at home. This kills timing really hard, though. I mean... Cyan, who may have only wow. barely in the most clutch scenario gotten an observer out, should be able to comfortably get one out now. Not to mention the revelations available to him. So, oh, DTs are not terrible to have. They're cheaper archons in terms of using minerals versus gas, but that's all these are going to be relegated to. I, I highly doubt we'll see them get any damage. Right. Best thing he can do is send one in and then save the other one because I'll see those two oracles for, you know, that odd timing two minutes later when Science kind of forgotten about it. But he's also getting a forge, so he could just sat down uh, cannons. Okay, oracles. He did not see the shimmer. <laughs> this is bad. He was supposed to be able to deny both of those from entering into the natural, much less the main base. Okay, so maybe cheese is a weakness and it is throwing Cyan for a loop. Whoa, wait. Oh, oh he tried to force the DT away from the main and force it himself out. <laughs> Oh boy. And then he why why did he recall? Well, is that worth it? I don't know. I uh, uh Oracle's dealing some damage here. You know two DTs were in your base and you're only gonna find one. You've been so long looking for that second one just for the confirmation. And you're not because of the recall. I I don't know. Huh. Let's see how badly this affects Cyan. I think that if it was me, I'd be spending way too long looking for that second DT. And that would have successfully juked me. Don't you so you see the animation of a warping in DT? No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. So, yeah, do you see the animation of a recall in DT? Probably not. Because it doesn't... Uh, it, it just stuns them. It doesn't reveal yeah. them. No, like, yeah, you definitely wouldn't... Yeah. Well, he figured it Oops, out huh? quickly enough. A couple oracles getting in there, but driven off very quickly. But this DT... Uh, you know, with the oracles dealing damage, they did. This didn't really turn out so bad. Uh, 12 workers killed the seven. Uh, yeah, the upgrades are even keeping on par with each other. I really expected that to fall off. Yeah. At the same time, the scientist did lose a lot of mining. Like, having force field hit himself off of his own base <laughs> and mining off of it for the full duration of that force field, that's rough. I would not have caught that force field. I was like... Looking at the observer, waiting for the army, and then realizing he'd force himself in. 
Mm, that must feel embarrassing. Uh, but more damage being done. If the oracles attack at once, they do two-shot probes, <clears throat> which is necessary against a shield battery, which otherwise would instantly regenerate the shields. So this is some really nice damage. This is 18 probes now killed to seven. So DT's not looking so great now. No, I still think there'll be the opportunity to present themselves as Archons as this game goes on. But both players are taking thirds, but at radically different bases. The third over here on the left most side, yeah, as we can see here from Scion, uh, it's taking kind of in a safer base. I say safer, though, very hesitantly, because you can still warp Prism in here and destroy it. But as far as walking in, there's only one entrance in. Unfortunately, with the way Mob has expanded, it does leave the expansion a little bit more exposed. I like how Mamba constantly uses the wrong pylon. It makes me feel better. The warp ins? Oh my god. Dude, <laughs> I, I wanted to say something. <laughs> uh, Oracles continue to do damage. The, the shield battery is great against one Oracle, but when it's two and they micro correctly, it's, it doesn't cut it. So these Oracles have certainly paid for themselves, given Sign a six probe lead and equal time the third bases really but the attacks incoming and i don't believe the oracle saw that they certainly don't have a relation on it can science army size up to it i think so yeah. he's up seven army supply yeah the immortals on both sides are gonna be pretty pretty much the powerhouses of this attack and they're close enough the number mm, charge plus two all I'm, almost done wait I'm fearful if, if mama has good war prison micro this could really tip the scales in his favor you know, I saw him the Resident Glaives. I kind of wanted to talk about what other things happened. I didn't realize he had finished it and then continued never to make an adept. Oh yeah, that is a little weird. That's that's super questionable. Making a couple right now, but really when you go for an adept all in, it's, it's mass adept. You can get on top of everything and this just isn't going to work out that way. Bit of a useless upgrade. A lot of Archons for our red Protoss. This comes from the DTs being much cheaper, but that being said, I still don't know if this is going to break him. If Cyan can hold, that's all he really needs to do here. He's got plus two weapons as well, so it's fantastic. Any future warp ins should be incredibly beneficial. And even uses his warp prism to scoop those Archons back to safety. Cool moves yeah. over there. But the Adept Chancellor to the main. Are they going to go through? This is more what Resident Glades would help with. Uh, but even if they kill a lot of probes, the army is still in question. Cyan could just counterattack. He's going to take out the exactly. warp prism eventually. Oh, uh, those charge slots, of course, help clean up the main really quick. GG's get tapped out here, and Cyan will be our second player qualified through. Nice. Nicely done. So ends our abrupt round robin, and Mamba, the newcomer, will not advance, but Cyan and top two recognizable names. Uh, great streamer in the oh. upcoming Twitch, or Twitch Protoss from China. Well, top's really fun. I'm glad we're going to have top. I really don't believe top is going to show us a crazy upset or destroy the group stage right but i think he's going to give us fun games and if they're anything half as fun as we saw today like i really really enjoyed that first best of three that was by far one of the best pvts we've cast in a while not in terms of like necessarily high skill and quality but that was fun man it was fun i'm glad we got some some good games here the gg cyan qualifies c2 <clears throat> and uh that's going to be it for the cast. So uh, I want to play another break. Two and a half hours. Let's play a commercial, guys. Let's make it worth it. We'll say our goodbyes when we get back. All right, guys. That will be the end of the cast. Short and sweet. Congratulations again to Top and Sign for advancing on. Um, I guess I'll leave it to Rifkin to elaborate on stuff that's happening and what happened today. Yeah, so again, it's a little unfortunate and kind of awkward. We end up having such a bad showing for signups, guys. Uh, I'll speak with Zombie. We'll reevaluate. It might actually just be in our best interest to move this day, anyways. I was really hoping to consistently keep things on a Friday evening. I thought it was going to work out really well, but um, just through turnout, it doesn't seem like it's worth it. Like, we could get no viewers. Like, it was really cool that the first week we got hype amount of viewers, right? Um, but I just feel like it's not worth it to keep it this time zone. However, if the audience is there and you guys really want us to keep this here, we can. Like, to be clear, this tournament has already paid for in full, so whether we get 500 viewers or 5,000 viewers is completely irrelevant other than stroking our own egos. But due to um, some scheduling stuff with Zombie Grub that I don't think is public, uh, we can't, we may be 
better off moving this anyway. So if you are one of the NA folks who like you never get to catch your morning broadcast or like things like that, I, I'm telling you, I'm urging you speak up now. Don't be silent on this. Let us know if you really want us to keep group stages at this time slot when we get there. Then we'll keep group stages at this time slot when we get there. But otherwise, it's just super awkward because like people aren't showing up for it. So uh, it was short, it was sweet, but we got it done, and I'm glad we did. Uh, top very fun player cyan that might not have had a chance otherwise two players we get to see in the group stage that we wouldn't normally get to see so good stuff over there that being said for the next week coming up we don't have anything planned with i am Kedavitsa going on if you see us live with anything it'll totally be just like a pop-up thing maybe it'll be an irl stream i don't know but we don't have any plan till like next monday or something i actually have to check the schedule i don't even know what that is we had past tense in the Lima league schedule for this week but that has since been moved as well on account of the fact that i am just gobbling up the entire schedule so it's a big hiatus it kind of sucks i hate taking weeks off we've done this three times this year so far i hate doing it but i think it's for the best because there's no point stressing and pushing and getting no results for it so i think we'll take a small hiatus for this week guys and when we get back we'll be better bigger stronger and hopefully everybody will be done hiding their im Katowice builds and more available to play in our stuff hopefully uh so that about sums it up then i guess if you guys are interested in learning more about the tournament of course you can go to the match arena as uh, it's not just these weeklies but ultimately coming to a big tournament happening later this year and you can donate yep. to the Macherino. You can also look at the rewards that are there, get some stuff like this Dodger coffee that I have and drinking uh, tonight, and then look at other sponsors as well. So <clears throat> thanks for watching, guys. Uh, as Rifkin said, if you still want to be in this time slot and you're really passionate about it, then definitely tweet at them. Communication is often the best way to get content creators to actually do something or keep something the same way. Yeah, change like, or whatever. Wanna, we're not asking for donations for this or subs, just a voice. If you're, you could never sub to this channel, it's fine. If you like watching stuff this time zone, just let us know. Tweet it at us, write it to us in the email, whatever you got to do. Make your voice heard. Otherwise, we'll probably look to move it. Um, yeah. But that being said, people are asking, can you host Top Stream? Absolutely. Top was the guy who won today. Happy to give him a host. So we'll probably end the stream here with a raid to ho uh, to Top. So thanks for the opportunity. Zombie Grub, any final words from you before we take off? Of course. Follow me on Twitter at ZG Gaming on Twitch Zombie Grub and YouTube Zombie Grub. I will be streaming tomorrow night. It's going to be my drinking stream. So... We're going to oh drink some and then play some custom games and arcade and stuff. It'll just be a chill night. It's usually a lot of fun for people. Um, Don't get banned, bro. <laughs> I'm going to get banned. Uh, and that's, uh, that about covers it for me. So, All right. Uh, I guess other than that, that, just follow the channel. Be back for more. And like I said, it's a downtime that we have to take. But we'll be back. We're not going anywhere anytime soon. It's just a small break, guys. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.